Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to my very first episode of Sue's Muse mm -hmm. right here on Nightlife Exchange. Today, we have a very special guest. I've known this man forever. He is a graduate of Yale. He is an ordained minister from Columbia Seminary. He is a multi-MAC and Bistro Award winner. He is a bona fide Broadway star, and he happens to just be the cover boy of the ASA's Cabaret Scenes magazine this month that you might want to check out. And he's doing a brand new show, uh, winding up uh, a three- show run of a brand new show called Take a Moment, which is on May 19th at two o'clock at the Lori Beachman Theater. Hi, Craig. Welcome. Thank you so much for being my very first guest. I couldn't be. Oh, well, my goodness. Congratulations on the new on the new uh, on the new outlet. That's fantastic. Well, it's going to be fun. I've never done a video magazine before, and we're going to call it kind of like a TV guide episode so that people can kind of come get to know you as a person and not just about the show. And kind of say, hey, I like this guy. Maybe I'll go see the show, you know, that type of thing. And I'm sure they're going to like you a great deal. Let's take a moment and talk about your show. Tell me why now. You've, you've come back after a long hiatus. What was the motivation to get you to come back to do this show and now? Well, I, I, so the main reason I, um, I, I was taking a break was because I was at a PhD program um, at uh, Princeton Seminary. And um, I just couldn't. I just couldn't do the two things at the same time. And when, as soon as I finished uh, that, as soon as I got my PhD, one of my main goals was, I had three goals. I wanted to get a friend base because I didn't love, lost touch with all my friends. I wanted to read more novels and I wanted to get more singing in my life, you know, and then the, the pandemic happened. So I read more novels <laughs> than I will ever read again <laughs> in a calendar year. I got that one done. But then it was like getting back in touch with my friends and, and getting more singing in my life. And so um, the, you know, the title of the show, it's Take the Moment. Um, it's a, a song from um, uh, a Richard Rogers, a Stephen Sondheim collaboration from 1965 called Do I Hear a Waltz? Mm -hmm. And um, it's the act one finale actually of that uh, show, Take the Moment. Um, and so I, I, I just realized, I started to realize, you know, my life has had so many different chapters and I've never been too shy about just sort of taking the, the moments as they come in my life and, and doing something with them. And I thought the next time I have the opportunity to, to do something in New York, I'll do it. And, and it came, my, my uh, longtime uh, musical collaborator that I met in Princeton just called me up and she said, look, we're doing a, a benefit uh, at uh, Lincoln Center for Ukraine. I want you to get out your calendar because you're doing it. I hadn't talked to her in like a year. And um, so I did, I came in, you know, we're all masked still. It was uh, about two years ago. And I just, as soon as I, you know, hit the stage and in the company of those folks, I just thought it's, it's, it's time, it's time, it's time for me to come back and what can I do? And I felt like I've never felt before, like telling my story. So I've tell done a lot about, of shows. Tell me a little bit about not, your process. About in, in the show, Take the Moment, um, mm -hmm. Did you have a collection of songs in your head? Did you have kind of a through line script? Did the chicken or the egg, did the music come first? Did the concept come first? Uh, what, what, tell me a little bit about how you put a show together and what your process is. It might be different for each show, but for this one. Yeah, well, I put a whole bunch of songs together that I just thought, well, these are songs that have kind of, you know, accompanied me in my life um, over, over time. A couple new ones that we ended up throwing in, you know, later. But I just said, look, here's like, you know, 40, 40 songs. And I just sort of started to winnow them out. It was a more a matter of what not to sing than than <laughs> what to sing. And when I, as soon as I got the, um, as, as soon as I got the sort of take the moment theme, and and then I thought, well, what was what would tell the story of that moment in my life? What would tell the story of this moment? And then I sort of selected from among the the things I had chosen, and then gradually we just started working on them. Um, and interestingly, uh, I would, as we worked on a song, I would create a worship service around it and, and sing it at my congregation and sort of, you know, have it be part of the sermon kind of thing. You know? And so uh, we just sort of debuting these material in my, in my, uh, at my congregational <laughs> post. So it's, it's, it's been, um, it's been kind of wonderful to incorporate all the different sort of versions of me. I realized that I had really compartmentalized myself um, in, in, in big, in big ways over the years. And this is really the first time I'm like all the me's all put together all at the same time, telling the whole story 
And uh, it's uh, really kind of liberating and, and, and wonderful. Well, we're thrilled to have you back. When was your first cabaret show? Not to out you or anything, but when was your first cabaret show and who booked you? Uh, my first cabaret show. So I was doing, I was in this, uh, I was in the cast of the Scarlet Pimpernel at the time. And, um, and I started to uh, have this idea of putting together a collection of act one finales. So, um, so as I was in the show, I was, you know, getting, raising money and to, to do an album. And um, and so the album and the show all debuted in uh, 2000. And so we booked at the Laurie Beachman Theater, the same place where I am right now. That full circle uh, thing's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. Well, the first time I ever sang there was at the concert renaming the place in honor of you know mm -hmm. our dear Laurie. So um, uh, I, it's a lot of lot of lot of heart in that room for me. So um, so that was the first one. That was the first one. And you know I don't know what was. I look back on the card that I did, 12 shows, four weeks, four weeks, three shows a week for four weeks. I don't know what I was thinking, but uh, you know, you would never do that now. Um, maybe there was a different it. then. <laughs> Who could the afford it? Contracts were different what, back then, let's face it. I don't it. know what I was thinking, but uh, but yeah, but it was a, it was a big, uh, it was a big, wonderful time in my life. Tell me about working with the fabulous <clears throat> Jeff Harner. Was he your director back in the day or how uh, did how did you guys come together to, to work on this project together? Well, I've known Jeff for a very long time. He sang with me on that very first album because I've, I've known Jeff since he he uh, he did the very I'll say the very first cabaret show I ever saw was his Cole Porter show late night at the Algonquin. That's when they had an 11 o'clock show. Right. At the Algonquin. Um, so I've known him for a long time since the 90s. And um, I've been seeing some of the things that he's done and um, was, uh, uh, you know, was involved in seeing how his Sondheim project, you know, launched mm -hmm. and knew that he was doing a lot of directing. And we talked about it because I said, you know, I don't want, you know, I want you to be my friend. I don't I don't want this to get in the way of our friendship. But um, would you be? And he said, anything you need, any in any way that you need it, I will do it. And you can call me whatever you want to call me. But if if you would like me to be a part of it, I'd like to be a part of it. Well, and it's sort of gradually, he he just sort of started taking more and more kind of, mm. you know, directorial decisions. He's had an amazing effect on the shape of the show, on the patter, on the way, on the way that it just all kind of creates an arc. He uh, really, really um, took a great interest in, in, in helping me with this. And, um, and to, you know, both of our, I mean, I, I allowed him to do it. I mm. was, it's hard when you're peers bit, but... too. I mean, because you guys, you know, were way up on the food chain back in the day. So, yeah. but to trust a peer that way, and to, I really am a big advocate of having a second eye. And I work with Lena Katrakis because she's mm. my my girl buddy, but she also really kind of keeps me from my bad self. And uh, Jeff Jeff shows I use as examples of perfect products. So you're in incredible hands. I can't wait to see the show. I will be there on the 19th, on May 19th. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, I want to talk, you mentioned Scarlet Pimpernel. Let's talk a little bit about your Broadway background. Is mm. it true that you started as a pig? <laughs> <laughs> it is. The very the very first, um, uh, you know, sort of professional show that I did was um, Charles Strauss, wrote a children's version musical of the uh of charlotte's web Charlotte's web yeah and um and he was he was he was involved in this production in new york it was like mounting it in new york he was on the ca at the casting table like when i did the audition and i got cast as wilbur in charles strauss's charlotte's web and it was just this amazing um amazing experience to you know here you are working with the guy who wrote you know annie and bye bye birdie and yeah. all this kind of stuff um, but yes, and I, to his enormous credit, they had they spent a whole bunch of time and money, you know, having this prosthetic snout um, that I was going to be wearing. Mm -hmm. But it was so hot, you know, it was like having a terrarium like on your nose. And and he finally said to the to, to the staff, he said, "I think he's a little too charming for the snout." Aww, that's <laughs> so well, I, was, I, I would die to have too charming for the snout. For I mean, the without, snout, really? what bigger compliment is that? I would die to have that. I played the role of a pig on my resume. So I think that's hysterical. So from there, how did you go? Uh, you were also in Les Mis, correct? Yeah, that was my big, that was my big, you know, Broadway, Broadway thing. Was that thing. before or uh, after Pimpernel? Before, mm -hmm. before Pimpernel. Yeah, my my first big, big thing was the Goodspeed Opera did the revival of the Marx Brothers Animal Crackers. 
And, um, and I was the fourth Marx brother, Zeppo. Uh, and it was a big hit. And, um, uh, and interestingly enough, you know, people came from New York and whatever. And one evening, um, a bunch of, you know, Broadway people came and I caught a ride back with um, Vicki Clark, Victoria Clark, and her agent back to New York from the good speed. It was the end of the week. So by the time I got back to New York, I had an agent. And the first job that the agent sent me up for was, was Marius in Les Mis. And then I got the job and I thought, oh, this is how it works. You know, you get an agent, you go to the audition, you get the job. You know, little, I, I found out uh, the disillusionment happened later. <laughs> but I thought, wow, I still don't know how I got that job because I must have, they must have been in a bind and I fit the, you know, I fit the outfit or something. Tell um, me, you know, I did the Met once uh, a couple, for a couple seasons. And I remember when walking out on the stage on the Met and being on the stage and looking out and going, holy God, I'm on the stage of the Metropolitan Opera. Do you have that moment? Were you cognitively aware of taking that in the first time you stepped on a Broadway stage? I think I, I th you know, when, when, during the, during the put in more, um, you know, you have the put in rehearsal on the mm -hmm. on the stage with the with mm -hmm. the cast um, just directly. You know, when you're when you're on the stage in the show, you can't even see anything. You can't mm -hmm. see the seats. You can't see the house. But during your rehearsal, when you're there and I'm one of these people who likes reading like the at this theater column in the playbill, you know, yeah. to see like what all the Imperial Theater. I mean, it was like uh, this legendary, you know, stage. Um, uh, so many people had to trot upon. So uh, I was, uh, I was really, really quite, quite thrilled, quite thrilled. So I want to talk, um, these are short interviews, but I just want to touch upon the work you do in your ministry. I know that you are an advocate of uh, religious inclusivity for race and sexual orientation and gender and everything. What do you do now? And I, I think you are still active in your ministry because you just mentioned that you kind of debut your your work in front of your uh, uh, congregation and stuff. Tell us a little bit about that work. Yeah, well, and not only those things, but also religious uh, uh, affiliation. So, so I'm a minister in the Unitarian Universalist movement, which is um, which is uh, a movement that embraces all people from all different re religious walks. So we've got Christians and Buddhists and Jews and Hindus and atheists and earth centered people. And, um, and we all come together um, to, you know, worship together. We use the original definition of the word worship, which is like to, a shaping concern for all that is of worth. Mm -hmm. And we make promises with one another, how we're going to treat one another. And so that, that is our covenant. And so we, we exist as a sort of covenantal body um, week after week, creating community together. And in that way, a particular uh, uh, church, I, I guess you call it. So yes, it's the Monmouth. It's the uh, uh, Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Monmouth County. Um, it's located in Lincroft, which is a little tiny town in the middle of a, what is one of the largest counties in New Jersey, the one right across the river mm -hmm. from Staten Island. And um, yes, it's, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the minister of this, uh, place and head of staff and it's a you know 18 acre property we have a school and I mean you know I'm it's a work day today I'm just taking a break to do this interview how lucky but, they uh, are to have you Craig it's I a think big that's deal wonderful in all that you do um so in closing I just want to ask you what was the best piece of advice from a mentor or friend that you got uh relating to the business hmm. be as prepared as you know how to be and then be flexible who was that from? I don't remember. You know what? You know what it actually was? It was a corn box. Soup. Was, no, <laughs> it, no, it was a it was a fortune cookie oh. that I opened with colleagues, and they said that's like the best advice for show business that I have ever heard. And so I still, ha I think I still have it in my wallet even now. Um, you that's know, amazing. over over prepare and be flexible is what the fortune cookie said. Over prepare and be flexible. That's can amazing. you imagine? it's perfect it's perfect yeah it i is. can't wait to see your show uh take too. the moment may 19th two o'clock glory beachman theater i'll be there yeah. and you've just booked another date for june 12th also at the Lori june beachman 12th. theater um you can go to Lori beachman theater's uh website and check it out and get your ticket today because he will sell out and we'll look forward to the fall dates that you're talking about so we keep us so, appraised yes. of what you're doing because i really want to make sure everybody gets to see the show and gets to meet you Thank you for spending a few minutes with us today, Craig. I really appreciate it. Such a delight, Sue. Congratulations on the new show. Oh, it's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time.
Thank you so, so much. Take care, everyone. We'll see you next time.